Yo, what up guys, it's your boy Dom the Radical Gamer, and welcome back to Doki Doki Literature Club. So, last time we left off, um, we're here with, we're still like, in like, I think the third or fourth day of the club. And uh, I guess we're talking about some sort of festival, so let's continue the conversation of, um, from where we left off. Right? Is this about the festival? Well, sort of. Ugh, what, do we really have to do something for the festival? It's not like we can put... I'm already... See, this is why I can't read, alright? I just suck at this. But, I, I, I'm, I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try. <laughs> it's not like we can put together anything good in just a few days. We'll just end up embarrassing ourselves instead of getting any new members. That's a concern of mine as well. I don't really do well with last minute preparations. Don't worry so much. We're going to keep it simple, okay? We won't need much more than a few decorations. Siori has been working on posters and I've designed some pamphlets we can give out during the event. Okay, that's great and all, but that doesn't tell us what we're actually going to do during the event. Ah, sorry, I thought you heard about it already. We're going to be performing. Performing? <laughs> um, Monica? Yeah, we're going to be having a poetry performance. Oh god. Even I can't perform in front of people. Like, as much as I dream and wish that I could, like, in real life, I, I can't, guys. As much as I really would like to show off some of my talents, I just can't. Like, I'd get too embarrassed, so... I, I, I can see where they're coming from. Each of us are going to choose a poem to recite during the event. But the cool part is, we're also going to let anyone else come up and recite poems too. Sayori's so putting it... So you're putting it on all the posters in case anyone wants to prepare ahead of time. <laughs> Siori, who's been coloring a poster, holds it up for us to see. Are you kidding me, Monica? You didn't... You didn't already start putting those posters up, did you? Uh, well, I did. Do you really think it's that bad of an idea? Well, no. It's not a bad idea. But I didn't sign up for this, you know. There's no way I'm going to be performing in front of a group of people like that. I, I agree with Natsuki. I could never in my life do something like that. Imagining it, Yuri shakes her head in fear. Guys? No, Sayori. I understand where they're coming from. Remember that Natsuki and Yuri have never shared their poems with anyone until just a couple days ago. It's a lot to ask for them to recite their poems out loud to a whole room full of people. I guess I kind of overlooked that. So I'm sorry. Hmm. But, I still think we should give it our best. We're the only ones responsible for the fate of this club. If we start the event and each put on a good performance, then it will inspire others to do the same. And the more people who perform, the better we'll be able to show everyone that liter what literature is all about. Yeah, it's about expressing your feelings, being intimate with yourself, finding new horizons, and having fun. That's right. I, you guys, I'm, I'm hope you guys didn't hear that voice crack, but we're gonna just ignore it, okay? All right, pretend it never happened. <laughs> and it's those reasons that we're all in this club today. Don't you have to share that with others? Oh, well, don't you want to share that with others? My bad. To inspire them to find the same feelings that brought you here in the first place? I know you do. I know we all do. And if all it takes is standing in front of the room in front of the room for two minutes and reciting a poem, then I know you can do it. And they're silent. Natsuki and Yuri remain silent. Siori looks worried. I believe that leaves me no choice. I agree. I don't think it's too much to ask. I am straight up lying, but sure, we'll roll with it. I think that Sayori and Monica have been re trying really hard to get new members. The least we could do is help them out a little bit, right? Well, maybe, but it looks like Natsuki doesn't have any ar ar arguments left. Uh, okay, fine. I guess I'll just have to get it over with. All right. Phew. Thanks, Natsuki. What about you, Yuri? Yuri dejectedly glances around at everyone else else's expectant faces. Uh, I I guess I don't really have a choice. Uh, that's everyone! You're the best, Yuri! This club is seriously going to be the death of me. Oh gosh, you'll be fine, Yuri. 
But anyway, let's move on to the main event. I want each of you to choose a poem of yours. We're going to practice reciting them in front of each other. N n no way! M Monica, this is t too sudden. Well, if you can't recite your poem in front of the club, how do you expect it to do it in front of strangers? Oh no. Don't worry. I'll start off to help everyone feel a little more comfortable. Can I go next? Uh, of course. Now let's see. Monica flips through her notebook to the specific poem she has in mind for herself. She then stands behind the podium. The title- oh, sorry. Wrong voice. <laughs> the title of this poem is The Way They Fly. Ahem. <clears throat> Monica begins reciting her poem. Her clear, confident voice fills the room. More than that, her inflection is pristine. She knows exactly how to apply emotion behind each line she recites, bringing the world, the words to life, not the worlds. I'm treating it like she's like, you know, the ultimate life form or something. <laughs> is this something she's done before or is she simply a natural? I, gla I glance around me. Everyone has their eyes on Monica. Siori looks amazed. Yuri has an intense expression on her face that I don't understand. Finally, Monica finishes the re recitation. The four of us applaud. Woo! I'm clapping, by the way. I don't know if you guys can hear it. Good job! Woo! Monica takes a breath and smiles. Th that was so good, Monica! Uh -huh. Thank you very much. I was just hoping to set a good example. Are you ready to go next, Siori? Uh, I'll go next. Wow, Yuri's fired up all of a sudden. Yuri clutches a sheet of paper between her hands and stands up, as you can clearly see, and the image to the left. <laughs> Keeping her head down, she walks qu quickly over to the podium. This poem is called... Yuri anxiously glances at each of us. You can do it, Yuri. It, it's called... After Image of a Crimson Eye. Yuri's voice shakes as she starts reading the poem. Just a moment ago, she practically refused to do this. Why is she suddenly putting in so much effort? As Yuri gets past the first couple of lines, her voice changes. It's almost like what happens when Yuri gets absorbed into her books. Her quivering words transform into sharp syllables of a fierce and confident woman. I then start daydreaming of us holding hands. <laughs> I'm joking guys, calm down. The poem is full of twists and turns in its structure and she enunciates with perfect timing. This must be a rare glimpse into the whirling fire Yuri keeps concealed inside her head. Suddenly she's finished. Did I say that right? Finished? I, I, I said finished, then I finished. Alright, English, Donovan. Everyone is stunned. Yuri snaps back to reality. Oh, there goes gravity. <laughs> and glances around her as if she bewildered even herself. I... It's up to me to save this situation. I'm the first to start applauding. Everyone joins me after we give Yuri the recognition she deserves. Woo! Yuri! That's my girl! I think... <laughs> it's not that we didn't want to applaud for her, but we were caught so off guard that we must have forgotten. I was so amazed I forgot to cheer for you. As we applaud, Yuri holds the poem to her chest and rushes back into her seat. Nyo. <laughs> she, she rushed out of there. Yuri, that was really good. Thank you for sharing. She is very quiet. Looks like Yuri is down for the count. Okay. I I guess I'm next then. Siori hops out of her chair and cheerfully walks to the podium. This one's called My Meadow. Uh, uh <laughs> Sorry, I giggled. <laughs> Sayori, it's a lot harder than I thought. How do you guys do it so easily? Ah, try not to think of it like you're reciting to other people. Imagine you're reciting it to yourself, like in front of a mirror or in your own head. It's your poem, so it'll come out the it'll come out the best that way. I see, I see. Okay then. Sayori begins her poem. Somehow it feels like her soft voice was made as a perfect match. The, po the poem isn't aimlessly cheery like Sayori is. It's serene and bittersweet. Ah, because she says she liked those type of poems. Nice touch. If I were to read this on paper, I probably wouldn't think much of it. But hearing it come from Sayori's voice almost gives it a whole new meaning. Maybe this is what Sayori meant when she says she likes my poems. It's 
It's like I get to reach more deeply into someone I thought I knew through and through. Sayori finishes and we applaud. I did it! Good job, Sayori. He <laughs> even Donovan liked it. I guess that's a good sign. What does that even mean? It came out nicely, Sayori. The atmosphere of the poem fits you really nicely. But it might it might be the other poems wouldn't work quite as well with that kind of delivery. Why did I read that like that? Like I actually had trouble with that sentence for some reason. <laughs> eh? I don't really understand. In other words, I've seen poems of yours where that sort of gentle delivery wouldn't work as well. She's saying her poem sucks, dang. It's messed up, Monica. They might need a little more force behind them, depending on what you're re reading. Oh, I know what you mean. That's... Well, I've been practicing that kind of thing. It's just embarrassing to do in front of everyone. <laughs> the next time, I'm going to make you pick a poem that challenges you a little more. We don't have much time before the festival, you know. Okay. Now who's next? Natsuki? Hmm. Don't make me go before Donovan. It's not like I can compare to you guys anyway. Might as well let Donovan lower everyone's standards a little before I have to do it. Before I have to do it. Wow. Natsuki. It's fine. It's fine. I might as well get it over with. But it's not like I have much of a selection of what to read. I'll just have to go with what I wrote for today. I stand up and step in front of the podium. Everyone has their eyes on me, making me feel terribly awkward. I then begin to wet my pants. Uh-oh. I then run out of the classroom, go home, and never come back. Honestly, like, I'd honestly be very ter- Like, I'd be, like, terrif- Not terrified, but, like, I'd be, like- I'd be very awkward if I actually tried to do this, so. But this is fantasy, so hopefully- Hopefully I do good in this game, and not in real life. I recite my poem. Since I'm not exactly confident in my own writing, it's hard to put energy into it. Despite that, once I finish, I receive applause anyway. Sorry, I'm not really as good as everyone else. Don't worry about it so much. I think it's less about your abilities and more about your lack of confidence in your writing. That's something that will improve over time though. Yeah, maybe. Alright then. That just leaves you, Natsuki. Yeah, yeah. I'm going. Natsuki, bruh, what is that? Begrudgingly, begrudgingly, gets out of her seat and makes her way to the podium. I hope they never use that word again. The poem is called, it's called, what? Why are y'all looking at me? Because you're presenting. Hmm. Anyway, the poem is called Jump. Stolen from Van Halen, rest in peace. Natsuki takes a breath. Once she starts reciting the poem, her sour attitude disappears a little. While she's still a little unenthused, unenthused, unenthused. I hate these words. Her poem has a rhythm and rhyme to it. She starts uh, beatboxing between the and she yeah she immediately starts beatboxing right after. It's Natsuki's trademark style and it works surprisingly well when spoken aloud. The words feel like they bounce up and down as if giving life to the poem, as Van Halen does in his song, Jump, which was a hit back in... I don't know what time. <laughs> Natsuki finishes and everyone applauds. She husks back to her seat. That wasn't so bad, was it? Easy for you to say. You better not make me do that again. Uh, well... Do you at least feel prepared to... Wow. Do you at least feel prepared enough to recite a poem in front of other people? I mean, doing it for the other people would be easier. I can put on whatever face I want for the other people. But when it's just my friends, it's just embarrassing. That's a surprise, Natsuki. I think it would be the other way around for me. Well, that's just how it is, so... Well, I guess in that case, you don't have much to worry about for the festival. That said, I want to thank everyone for coming through. It might be hard, but I hope that you all have an idea of what it's like now. Make sure you pick a poem and get enough practice before the festival, okay? I'll be making pamphlets, so let me know ahead of time what you'll be reciting. Jeez. I should probably find some other poem to recite instead. That's fine too. It doesn't have to be your own. I'm already pleasantly surprised that you're putting in all this effort for the club. It makes me really happy. Uh, yeah, no problem. 
Okay, everyone. I think that's about it for today. I know the festival is coming up, but let's try to write poems for tomorrow as well. It's been working out really nicely so far, so I'd like to continue that. As for the festival, we'll finish planning tomorrow, and then we'll have the weekend to prepare. Monday's the big day. I can't wait. I can do I can do this. I can do this. All right. I stand up and sit back down. No, I'm kidding. There's no way I'll be able to find the same enthusiasm with Sayori and Monica, but I'll do my best to get through it. If it's for the sake of the club and impressing Monica, then I'll have to do my best. Ready to go, Sayori? Yep. Look at you two, always going home together like that. It's kind of adorable, isn't it? <laughs> Jeez, guys. Don't make such a big deal out of it. She's only my best friend, and she really likes me. What? I didn't say that. Yuri, you didn't hear that. I like you. It must be a little nice, though. Ah, she's jealous. Well, uh... How am I supposed to respond to that? It's okay, Donovan. You don't have to say it. Whatever. Let's go already. And we're off. I walk home with Sayori once more. Even though it's only been a few days, a lot of things have already changed. But today, Sayori is being a little quieter than usual on the way home. Hey, Sayori. Uh-oh. Sorry. Oh, Ram. I keep messing with these voices. Sorry, I was spacing out. Ah, no wonder. Um, I was thinking about something from earlier. I like how we get to... I, I mean... Sayori fumbles with, with her words. So, let's just say that one day... Yuri asked to walk home with you. Huh? What would you do? What kind of question is that? You're kind of putting me on the spot here. <laughs> well, I would walk home with Yuri. I would still walk home with you, Sayori. Oh. Oh, I don't want to... Why do I have to choose? Okay, you know what? As much as, much as I really like Yuri, okay... But like I'm a, I'm gonna try to do this like if it feels like with my like real life, all right. So let's say I usually hang out with a friend, right? But I really like this girl, right? And then I want to start hanging out with her a lot, even though like I still hang out with my friend, my ho she like he or she is my homie or my home girl, all right. So I still gotta stay there for her. So I think that's that's gonna apply with Sayori too. I'd still walk home with you, Sayori. Sayori. You really think I would ditch you for Yuri? Eh? B but she's so beautiful and smart. I mean, you're not wrong. Jeez. I already see her in the club every day. Besides, you always seem to really like going home together. I wouldn't just ruin that for you. You're so silly, Donovan. You think about me too much sometimes. Yuri would, deser Yuri would deserve it if she wanted it, so... Sayori, I've already made up my mind. I really can't figure you out sometimes. Sorry. Besides, what's the point in speculating something that's never going to happen? Hmm. The conversation trails off. It's kind of a weird thing for Sayori to care so much about. But I want to respect her and keep her happy too. Then again, the festival is only a few days away. Who knows what will happen in that time. Huh, okay. Alright, another poll we go. Uh, fear. Okay, Sayori like that one. Uh, disoriented. We're gonna keep going for Yuri, alright. We're going the full Yuri route. Uh, incongruent. Unrestrained. Just pick all the intellectual. That's what I am not, but whatever. Um, analysis. Insight. Extraordinary. Okay, yeah, that works. Uh, effulgent. Despise. Unrequited. Unrequited? Unrequited? I don't know. Uh, frightening. Uh, let's not talk about this word. Um, hmm. Extreme. There we go. Determination. Uh, lust. Ooh. Uh, destiny. Hmm. Uh, Wrath. Okay, okay, nice, nice, nice. Uh, Pain, I guess. Oh, okay, Siori likes that. 
Unstable. No, let's not talk about that. Um, judgment. And melancholy. There we go. That's like a Yuri Seri, like a half Yuri, half Sayori poem. Mostly Yuri, but whatever. Oh man, I'm the last one here again. All right, so this is um, this is a new day basically, right? So don't worry, I just walked in too. Were you practicing piano again? Yeah. <laughs> you must have a lot of determination. Starting this club and now picking up piano. Well, maybe not determination, but I guess passion. Remember that the club wouldn't be here if it wasn't for all of you. And I'm super happy that you're all willing to help out for the festival too. Ah, I can't wait for the festival. What is up with Natsuki now? Like, pretty d d did she hate it? Like the other day and now she's like, let's go. All right. It's gonna be great. Eh? Weren't you complaining about it yesterday, Natsuki, right? Well, yeah. I'm not talking about our part of the festival, but the whole day of school where we get to play and eat all kinds of delicious food. You sound a little bit like Sayori all of a sudden. Monica, do you usually have fried squid? Squid? That's a pretty specific thing to look forward to. Oh, come on. Are you saying you don't like squid? You of all people? Eh? I didn't say I don't like it. Besides, what do you mean by you of all people? Because it's right in your name. Mon Ika. Oh my god. I hate it. <laughs> eh? That's not how you say my name at all. Also, that joke makes no sense in translation. Eh? Uh, never mind. Okay, this is that was a is that that was a weird pun, weird joke. I don't I don't even know what that was. Let's just focus on our event for now, okay? <laughs> fine, fine. Your reactions are as fun as Yuri's or Sayori's anyway. Excuse me. Where is Sayori anyway? Oh, there you are. Sayori's sitting at a desk in the corner of the room, looking down at nothing. She then turned invisible, because I cannot see her anywhere here. <laughs> I walk over to her. Hey, Sayori. I wave my hand in front of her face. Eh? You're spacing out again. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. <laughs> Sorry. Don't mind me. You can go talk to everyone else. Huh? Is everything alright? For real, girl. What's up with you? Uh, of course. Why, w why wouldn't it be? It just feels like you're a little off. Sorry for assuming things. Jeez, you worry too much about me. I'm fine, see? Siori shows me a big smile. Don't let me distract you from having fun with everyone. Well, alright. If you say so. I worriedly glance at Sayori before turning back toward everyone else. But the conversation has already dispersed, with everyone back at their usual activities. Maybe I should ask Monica if she's noticed anything about Sayori recently. Since they've been preparing for the festival, they must be spending a lot of time together. I timidly approach Monica, who is shuffling through some papers at her desk. Donovan, what's up? Hey, this might sound a little strange, but have you noticed anything up with Sayori recently? Anything up with her? In what way do you mean? Maybe I'm reading into it a little too much, but she seems a little bit down a little bit downcast today. Like she straight up like emo. Okay, probably not emo, but she's like she's not okay. She needs help for some reason. I don't know why. Oh, you think so? I can't say I've noticed anything about her. Monica peers across the room at Sayori, who is idly dragging a rubber eraser up and down her desk. Yeah, she is... Something's up. Something's up with her. Maybe there is something on her mind. But I'm surprised I'm not the one asking you, Donovan. You certainly know her a lot better than I do. Yeah, but she's never really liked this. She's always talked to me about things that bothered her. But this time, when I asked her, she was really dismissive. Sorry, I know it's not your problem. I just wanted to ask if you knew anything, so I'll drop it now. No, no. It's important to me, too. I mean, I'm also friends with her. And also, I care about the well-being of my club members, you know? Maybe I'll try... Oh. My mouth is dry, okay? 
That's that's gonna be my excuse for not reading right. My mouth is dry. All right, let, let's just put it at that. Maybe I'll try talking to her myself. Eh, are you sure about that? She seemed like she wanted to be left alone. Are you sure? Maybe she just has a hard time bringing it up with a person of in with a person of interest. Person of interest. I actually predict. I actually, like I just said that. Not even reading that. I just. I actually like question like person of interest. I didn't even read it. Wow, I'm psychic. What do you mean by that? I'm saying that maybe the thing on her mind is you, Donovan. Me? How on earth would you come to that conclusion? Well, I probably shouldn't say too much, but Siori talks about you more than anything else, you know. Eh? She's been so much happier ever since you've joined the club. It's like an extra light was turned on inside of her. What? No way. Siori's always like that. She's always been full of sunshine. It's not any different now than it all than it has always been. <laughs> you're so funny, Donovan. Have you thought that maybe you're always seeing her as so cheerful? Because that's just how she is when she's around you. Huh. She likes me, I think. I don't know. Uh, I said too much. I'm sorry. What do I know anyway? I didn't mean to jump to conclusions, so you should just forget about what I said. I'll try to talk to her, so try not to think about it for now. Ah. Alright. Uh, okay. Monica smiles meaningfully. I know she said to forget about it, but I already know that I won't be able to get her words out of my head. Monica stands up from her desk and walks across the room to where Sayori is sitting. I watch her kneel down next to Sayori and gently talk to her. But she's keeping her voice so quiet that I can't hear her from here. I sigh and sit down myself. I sit I sigh and sit myself down. I hate I hate it. I hate it. <laughs> I know Sayori told me not to worry about her and to have fun with everyone else. But that's impossible to do when she's behaving like this. Exactly how much do I care about her that I'm letting this weigh me down so much? Now it feels like I'm the one behaving out of the ordinary. But there's nothing I could do besides wait for Monica. Why does it feel like I'm being watched? I glance around the room. Suddenly I notice Yuri peering at me from over her book. Hey, hi Yuri. Stalker. <laughs> hey, I don't mind you stalking me, girl. Alright. <laughs> But she looks away just as quickly with a flustered look on her face. I realize that she won't get anywhere like this. I've never really seen Yuri approach anyone or start a conversation on her own accord. So I have no choice but to approach her myself. By now it's a little easier for me to do that. I stand up from my desk and sit in one I sit in one next to her own. Okay. I I didn't mean to bother you or anything. Relax, you didn't even do anything. But, I could tell that you wanted to be alone with your thoughts. Alone with my thoughts? How were you even able to tell that I was thinking like that? Well, it's something that I do a lot. So it wasn't hard for me to spot based on your posture and expression. N not that I was staring or anything. I didn't do anything creepy like that. In any case, I guess you were right. I'm sorry if I caused you any concern. Don't apologize. Your troubles are are only the concern of those who willingly share in that concern. Of course, there are certainly those who find the most comfort in keeping to themselves. But if you would prefer to share what's on your mind, then I would be glad to listen. Ah, it's really not that big of a deal. I was just feeling a bit uneasy about Sayori. Sayori? Yeah, she seems a little off today. But when I asked her about it, she didn't want to admit it to me. So I can't help but wonder if something happened to her. Oh, that's quite romantic. Romantic? Hey, Yuri, calm down. Hey, are you sad right now? I can do that for you. Hey, what's going on? <laughs> eh? S sorry, I didn't mean to say something stupid. It's not that, I just didn't want you to misunderstand. Siori and I have just been friends for a long time, that's all. Ah, I see. There is hope for me. <laughs> there sure is, Yuri, alright. There sure is. Then perhaps it is unusual for her to be dismissive to you about her feelings. Or maybe I'm just reading into it a little too much. 
Donovan. The world is full of meaning, often hidden deep beneath in plain sight. And there are many untold mysteries behind every person, no matter how well you may know them. Ah, so you think that there might be something behind it after all? Hmm, I think that Sayori is a very complex person. Her mannerisms on the outside don't always match what, what may be going on inside her head. And she might not always know what she wants. I noticed her strange behavior today too. And I also feel some concern for her. But in your case, it looked like she was fully occupying your thoughts, wasn't she? Well, I guess that was I, I guess that was the case. Sayori, she really means a lot to you, doesn't she? Uh, I, I guess. But you don't need to put it that way. We're just good friends, that's all. Yuri suddenly looks deeply into my eyes. Then can you be my boyfriend? <laughs> uh... Things that go through my mind. <laughs> Her expression is gentle and curious, as if she was searching for something. Embarrassed, I avert my gaze. Sometimes, a person's mysteries are untold even to themselves. And you, as someone honest and caring, may uncover feelings you weren't aware were in you. That is, I think that she would be a very fortunate person to have you feel that way about her. Yuri, you're giving me too much credit. I'm a pretty simple guy. I see a girl with purple hair and she's very smart and pretty. I'm gonna go on a date with her, hey! <laughs> so, I th so I think I'm pretty good at understanding my own feelings. I'm not nearly as sophisticated as you. Uh, uh, that's not a compliment, is it? It is what it is. What it is. Hey. Anyway, as long as as long as we're here, why don't we do some reading? Well, as long as you're okay with it. Yeah. I should be taking my mind off this whole thing anyway. Oh, it's quiet. Okay, everyone. After some time passes, Monica calls out to the club room. Why don't we share our poems now? Before I before I know it, everything is back to normal. Everyone goes to retrieve their poems, and I do the same. I make eye contact with Monica, and she smiles at me. I wonder what she was talking about with Sayori. Huh. Who should I show my poem to first? Uh... I really want to check on Sayori, because, uh... I, sh I don't think she's doing good. Let's try talking to her again. Hmm. It's nice, I guess. Come on, I can already tell you didn't like it. Well, you don't need to worry about what I think. After all, you wrote this for someone else, didn't you? Come on, don't pull a Natsuki on me, alright? She already yelled at me for writing it for Yuri. I mean, I didn't write it for Yuri, you wrote it for Yuri. <laughs> alright. Probably Yuri. Sayori. Shut up. <laughs> eh? I didn't write this for anyone specifically. Okay. <laughs> hey, maybe. That's not really what I meant, though. But it's okay. You're making new friends, just like I was hoping. That makes me really happy. Clearly. And you're happy too, right? In this club? Well, of course I am. Good. That's all that matters to me. Thank you, Donovan. Sayori, is there something wrong? Huh? No, nothing. I'm just a little tired today. <laughs> Alright. Just tell me if you need anything. I will. Don't worry about me, okay? You can go play with everyone else now. If you insist. Yay! I want to go home a little bit early today. Sayori? Tell Monica I wasn't feeling well, okay? I'll see you tomorrow. Before I can say anything else, Sayori cheerfully walks out of the classroom humming to herself. What the heck? She just left? She just dipped. She's like, alright, I'm gonna head out. And then she... <laughs> what? Bruh. She just said, alright, understandable. Have a great day. And then she... Then she just disappeared. Wow. That's horrible. Sayori, come back. Alright, I'll just show it to Yuri. Donovan, your writing has only improved in these last few days. Every poem you've shown me has been nothing short of spectacular. 
I can really feel the emotions. I'm a little envious even. I don't think it ever came to me this naturally. Yuri, that's the wrong way to put it. This never did come naturally to me. But I've been able to improve so much thanks to you. You're really the example I was chasing after. It, is, is that so? Yuri gently smiles to herself. This feeling. I'm so glad I got the chance to share my writing. I never thought I'd feel like this. I remember you mentioning that yesterday. I can't believe that you're so good at something and you've never even shared it with anyone. It's kind of a shame. Maybe, but it's not like I really had a choice. What do you mean? Well, Siori smiles sadly. Donovan, during lunchtime, I eat by myself. Oh no, this is getting sad. No, Yuri, why? Sayori left and now Yuri is giving me a sob story. I'm gonna cry, man. Did you know that? It's a great time to find a quiet spot and do some reading. In fact, I always have books with me. You could say I really enjoy reading. Well, that's one way to put it anyway. But books are so full of amazing and inspiring people. People you want to fall in love with. Or people you just know would make a really good friend. Cheerful people who always put a smile on your face. Or deep thinkers who pro or pr and problem solvers who discover the mysteries of life. So when you look at it that way, I'm surrounded by friends every day, you know? And those friends don't laugh at me. They don't tease me for spacing out all the time. And they don't make fun of my body type. Make fun of your body type? Girl, you are great. Okay, don't don't let anyone tell you different. All right. Th okay, I'm going to tell this. Here's a message to not just not just the ladies, all right? F for the guys too, for the homies, all right? All right. You all of you, even the guys, y'all are good looking, all right? Someone someone out there in the world thinks you're good looking. Probably not for me. I don't think anyone thinks I'm good looking. But you know what? I know that every single one of you watching this video, all right, is good looking. Okay. In someone's eyes. If you think, man, you know, I'm never going to get a girlfriend. Or, man, I'm never going to get a boyfriend. You know, you're wrong. Okay. You are absolutely wrong. All right. Someone out there thinks you are amazing. All right. Someone out there. All right. So th that's my message to all of you. All right. Never. Don't always think that no one likes you. All right. Because I'm sure there's at least one person out there that truly cares for you and actually, you know, thinks you're a really great person. Okay. So don't don't let that ever, you know, like keep you down. All right. My like Tupac once said, "Keep your head up." All right. All right. Let me continue. All right. That that's enough advice for me. And, and they don't hate me for acting like a know-it-all. People say that about you? I'm not a know-it-all, Donovan. It's the opposite. I don't know anything. I don't know how to talk to people. I don't know how to make people see me as normal. I don't even know how to make myself happy. I have all these feelings, and all I can do with them is read and write. But it wasn't until now that I started sharing it with you that I really understand what was missing all this time. But I haven't really done anything. No, that's wrong. Just being patient and respectful, that's really important to me. I know I'm a difficult person, Donovan. I speak too slowly. I second guess myself all the time. I read too deeply into things. But every time, you've always treated me like just like anyone else. It's so rare that I feel comfortable with myself when I talk to others. But that's why every time I talk to you, I just feel really happy. I see. Well, I treat you how you deserve to be treated, Yuri. And if other people don't see it that way, then screw them. I mean, I joined this club hoping I would make friends. And I would say I've had at least one- I, I would say I've had at least one success. Wouldn't you? Um, if you put it that way, yeah, we really are friends now, aren't we? Yuri puts her head in her hands. 
but this time she's smiling as she does it. Aww. Do you want to share? Do you want to show me your poem? Yeah, I do. Let me get it for you. Ghost Under the Light Part 2. Oh, okay. The tendrils of my hair illuminate beneath the amber glow. Oh, it's like the same one as last time, but it says Part 2. Bathing. In the distance, a blue-green light flickers. A love figure crosses its path, a silhouette obstructing the eerie glow. My heart pounds. The silhouette grows closer, closer. I open my umbrella, casting a shadow to shield me from visibility. But I am too late. He steps into the streetlight. I gasp and drop my umbrella. The light flickers. My heart pounds. He raises his arm. Time stops. He then yells, Zawaterlo. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, sh I shouldn't be making a JoJo reference right now. The only indication of movement is the amber light flickering against his outstretched arm. The flickering light is in rhythm with the pounding of my heart, teasing me for succumbing to this forbidden emotion. Have you even heard of a ghost feeding, feeling warmth before? Giving up on understanding, I laugh. Understanding is overrated. I touch his hand. The flickering stops. Ghosts are blue-green. My heart is amber. Ah, That was real. Okay, I'm gonna be real. That was really sweet. Like, I, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy after that now. This is very sweet. This is so wholesome, guys. <laughs> Literally, like, this is just, just this, this is nice. All right. Finishing the poem, I start to hand it back to Yuri, but instead of taking it from me, she looks away. Do you dislike it? Uh, no, of course not. I just don't really know how I should respond. Despite Yuri's poems usually being cryptic, I wasn't. It wasn't hard to figure out what this was about. What this one was about. She loves me. I. I don't know if I'll be able to explain this one. That's fine. I understand this one. Yuri is having an even harder time speaking than usual. Does this one mean a lot to you? Yuri nods. I'm not really good with words, but or reading. But I'm happy that you shared it with me. So thank you. And I hope we keep spending time together. Despite my inability to make eye contact, I see a faint smile emerge on Yuri's lips. I once again try to hand the poem back to her, but instead Yuri gently takes my hands and pushes them back toward me. I hesitate in response to her warm touch. You can... Um... The poem is... Once again, Yuri fails to form a complete sentence. You mean I can keep it? Yuri nods. I'd love to. Again, Yuri faintly smiles as if she doesn't want me to notice. You always, you always make me feel nice. I know I'm not good with people, but I hope that I can return the favor sometimes. Yeah, don't worry. Hold on, let me snooze my alarm. <laughs> I had an alarm. Don't worry. I think you do a great job. Yuri finally turns back toward me. I guess we should move on before Monica says something. But I'm sure we could talk again later. Yeah, I'm sure we will. With that, Yuri timidly smiles at me, and I return to my seat so I can put her poem away. Ah, who should I show my poem to next? Uh, Natsuki, sure. I always do Monica last. Yeah, no thanks. Hey, you didn't even next. Oh, I'm never talking to that girl again. You know what? She can, she can just go away. <laughs> She didn't even read it. Like, she knew immediately it was for Yuri. Wow. Natsuki hates me. Hi, Donovan. Have you thought about what you want to submit to perform at the festival? Well, being in this club is one thing, but performing in front of a bunch of people? I'll have to give it some more thought. Okay, no pressure. But whatever you do, I'm sure it'll turn out great. It would also make me happy to see. Uh -huh. Anyway, let's take a look at today's poem. Sure. I let Monica take the poem I'm holding in my hands. Your style's gotten so refined, Donovan. Yuri's been teaching you a lot of things, hasn't she? Well, I guess so. Yeah, I've been noticing how much time you spend with her. I think I've heard her say more words these past couple days than she's talked in the whole year. Not sure how you did it, but that's pretty impressive. Well, she just needs some patience and a way to talk about all the things in her head, I guess. I'm still getting the hang of it myself. Hmm. 
You're certainly putting in a lot of effort. You must really like her. Eh, uh, that's... <laughs> it's awfully suspicious, you know. Spending time with her in the club room every day. Reading that edgy novel with her. Hey, it's not edgy. It's beautiful. Well, I just feel bad that she has a hard time socializing. It makes me want to make sure she doesn't spend all her time alone. Besides, the novel isn't too bad either, you know. Alright, alright. I get you. Monica jealous too. Everyone's jealous in this... Everyone's jealous in this game. Alright, that's messed up. I feel bad. Just be just be careful, alright? I know that Yuri isn't used to be to opening herself up. So if something bad happens while she's vulnerable, then it could be really hard for her. Her books aren't a total escape from reality. They're just a bandage. You say that like I'm going to hurt her. Sorry, I didn't really mean it that. I didn't really mean that. If anything, she might accidentally hurt herself. Anyway, I'll share my poem with you now, alright? Uh, alright. The lady who knows everything. An old tale tells us of a lady. The old tale tells of a lady who wanders earth. The lady who knows everything. A beautiful lady who has found every answer, all meaning, all purpose, and all that was ever sought. And here I am, a feather. Lost adrift the sky, victim of the currents of the wind. Day after day, I search. I search with little hope, knowing legends don't exist. But when all else has failed me, when all others have turned away, the legend is all that remains. The last dim star glimmering in the twilight sky. The twilight sky. That doesn't say twilight. Until one day, the wind ceases to blow. I fall, and I fall, and I fall, and fall even more. Gentle as a feather, a dry quill, expressionless. But a hand catches me between the thumb and forefinger, the hand of a beautiful lady. I look at her eyes I look at her eyes and find no end to her gaze. The lady who knows everything knows what, what I am thinking. Before I can speak, she responds in a hollow voice. I have found every answer, all which amount to nothing. There is no meaning, there is no purpose, and we seek only the impossible. I am not your legend. Your legend does not exist. And with a breath, she blows me back afloat and I pick up a gust of wind. Wow. You know, I feel like I'm learning a, I'm learning and looking for answers are the sorts of things that give life meaning. Not to get too philosophical or anything, but it was kind of on my mind, so that's what I wrote about. I see. I never really put much, much thought into it. In a way, it's almost paradoxical. Because if we had all the answers, wouldn't the world start to lose its meaning? You know, there's one thing I noticed. It seems like everyone in the club prefers writing about things that are more sad than happy. <laughs> are you surprised? I mean, if everything was okay, we wouldn't really have anything to write about, would we? Humans are two-dimensional creatures. You mean three-dimensional, but whatever. Uh, here, let me snooze this alarm one more time. Jesus. Alright, I think you know that better than anyone. You mean one-dimensional? Uh, yeah, that. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Are you ever too shy to share your writing because you're afraid it's not that good? It can be really disheartening to get a lukewarm response to something you put so much into. But if you find other people who enjoy writing, then sharing becomes a lot easier. Because instead of just telling you that your writing is good, or okay, or bad, they'll want to focus more on everything that went into it, and the things you can work on. It's much more encouraging that way, and it will make you want to continue improving. It's almost like having your own little literature club, don't you think? That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Dang, this is getting really deep. All right, okay, you three. All right, I think we're going to end it off right there uh, for Doki Doki Literature Club. All right, I think we're getting in to like, more of the festival stuff, so I'm excited for that. And we're getting closer with Yuri. All right, I think that's the most exciting. So, yeah, I can't wait to see what's coming up, so... That's going to be it for this episode, so thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe for more radical content and more Doki Doki Literature Club. And I will see you guys next time. Stay radical.